Hello, my name is Charissa Oliveris, and before I get my presentation started, I would like to say that I am 100% okay. My presentation is on making special effects. Special effects started in the mid-1920s by a man named Lon Chaney, who decided to make his own personalized look for his roles in The Phantom of the Opera, The Hunchback in Notre Dame, and other such plays. It was not very popular until the 1930s, where monster films started becoming extremely popular. Nowadays, you can see special effects used in movies, plays, Halloween costumes, and cosplay outfits. For your materials, you will need a red ink pen. I do not need it. And I threw it out last take. But you will need it if you want to make an outline of where you want to make your wounds first. You also need fake blood. If you do not have any actual fake blood from the store, you can use food coloring or a drink enhancement. You will need glue or the professional fake skin latex, wax, or other. You will need two toothpicks, one for glue and one for blood. A mirror if you are working with your face and makeup powder specifically a pink one or one that is more yellowish than your skin for the application of a wound first before you get anything started put your hair up you do not want to get your hair in the way of your glue or fake blood as it will mess up the effect or it will just make your hair sticky or malcolored once you put your hair up and away from your face, what you want to do is make a line of where you're going to have your wound. I am running out of wound space, so I will be making my wound right around here. Once you make your outline, you want to take your powder. Depending on what kind of wound you want to make, old or new, you grab that color. If you're making an old one, you will take the yellowish. If you want a new one, you will take the pinkish. I will be using an older wound. And what you do, where you outlined, if you outlined, you add the powder. It gives the base illusion of being old skin or skin that had to grow back. Once you get that out of the way, you take your glue or your fake skin, depending on what you are using, and take it off of the stick. Once you get it off of your glue stick, make sure that you have a generous amount. If you have for a big wound, you're going to need more than this. If it's a small wound, this should be enough. Take the glue off of the stick and apply it to where your wound is going to be at, smudging as you go. The smudging is so that it can, one, dry faster, and two, look as closely as possible to skin. If you don't use enough glue, that is okay. You can always go back and get more glue in this step. If you are satisfied with how much glue you have and where you put it, take your glue stick one more time and draw a line right down the middle of it. The next part is the fun part. Fan it a little. This helps it dry a little bit faster. Once you have fanned it, Take your fake blood. If you want a fresher wound, 
use a darker colored blood or more of your drink enhancer. You get your toothpick for your fake blood. Get a generous amount of fake blood on it. And make a line right through the line where your wound is at. This should give the illusion of either bleeding or having been bleeding. If you want to fan one more time, that is okay. No one is stopping you from fanning your wound. If you are making an old wound, you are going to need your powder one more time. You grab the paler color and you apply it to the wound to make it look old and therefore not as grotesque as the new wound. It takes a bit for glue to dry. As you can see in the picture there, I have some purple still left over from the glue I was using. This is okay. It is normal. It takes a little bit for glue to dry. If you are not a patient person, you can use a blow dryer if you prefer. Or, if it was too much glue and it's not drying fast enough, you can take off all the glue that remains. And feel free to experiment. It does no harm if it's not perfect either. Bruising is harder than making scars, I believe, because it requires more coloring especially on a pale person such as I. <laughs> if you want to make the effect of a bleeding nose, you are going to need your fake blood, dip it in there, run it around the rim of your nose, put it inside your nose a little bit, just a little bit, and start making a path where the blood was running. If you want to make it look like you've had it a while, smudge it by wiping your nose. And that is all I have for this presentation. I hope this helps you for your next costume. And have a great day.